Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, E.D. Lewis Reviews, back here with another nocturnal review. Before we get started, you remember the drill, you know, hit that like, hit that subscribe button with the little bell, so you'll get notifications for all my upcoming videos, as well as also, please leave a comment down below. So, that's the little spiel, and let's get on with the review. So, we are finally in October, it is spooky season. And, um, uh, I'm actually not starting October with a spooky review, well, spooky-ish, it has some spooky elements, a spooky review. This is actually a review of the book that I actually buddy read with Regina at Regina's Haunted Library, uh, whose, uh, link I will have down to her channel, uh, link to her channel I'll have down below in the description. I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words here. Um, and what we read was The Trembling Hills by Phyllis A. Whitney. Uh, now, actually, I'd actually seen this book in one of her book hauls on um, Instagram. And then, of course, she did it later on BookTube as well, right here. And I saw the cover, which is different from this one. Hers is, looks like it's in a later edition. Um, and I think maybe a thicker edition than mine. Um and I thought it looks so interesting and so cool. So I was like, I'm going to, you know, look for that. So I did. I went looking for it and actually found it at my local bookshop in the Gothic section. And I saw I had a different cover. I almost gave up hope because like, oh, I don't see it. And they had a lot of Phyllis A. Whitney books there. But I didn't see this one at first. And it was the only copy I saw. And so I grabbed it. And this is, you know, the copy that I have. It has the typical woman, you know, running away from the spooky house, one light on, and a dark figure in the window. So, you know, it's the typical gothic cover. And it's from Ace. And Ace uh, had the thing of being, you know, the slogan, would it be? Of being first in gothic, which, I mean, they pretty much were first in gothic because they were one of the first ones that really put gothic out there in the 50s and 60s, late 50s and the 60s and 70s. <clears throat> But I don't think they were the ones that actually got the gothic cover going. That was actually someone else. And that was actually a book, which I haven't reviewed yet. I read earlier this year, and I will get around to reviewing it at some point. It may be November by the time I get there. But it's called um, Mistress of Melon. Sorry, it's behind me off to my side um, by uh, Victoria Holt. And it's it's very good. Um. Anyway, this one came out in 1956. I don't know when this edition's from. I assume maybe it might be because it doesn't give another date on it. I know some books, even later editions, sometimes will only give the date that the book was originally published and won't give their, you know, the date that their edition was. So I don't know if this is an original from 56 or if it's just a tad later, but I mean, it does have clearly the edges of this book were colored, but the pages have still yellowed a bit. But anyway, so anyway, <clears throat> um, we got in contact and we, you know, agreed that we'd read this book. I did start it a little bit ahead of time and then I sat it down and then we got on our uh, buddy read. And so I actually couldn't find my bookmark because I, I just used a little piece of paper because at the time I didn't know where any bookmarks were that I could use. So I just used a little scrap of paper. And I drew a little arrow on it to tell me where I was. Because I, I like to know where what line I left off on. Um, it's just a thing with me. But anyway. So I did backtrack a little bit. And I reread a bit of it. And um, when I started it, it was just one of those books that I'm like, oh, this is really good. And I'm like, I love how Phyllis A. Whitney writes. The way she just quickly pulls your attention. Kind of like Mary Stewart in a way. Because there's a Mary Stewart book I read, and I need to reread it before I do a review on it, called um, Madam Will You Talk? And it, I didn't think it was, I, I just pretty much picked it up. It's just like, oh, this is just going to be, uh, you know, something to pass the time. And I'm like, oh my god, this book is so good. Because it was it really was, it was very suspenseful, but that's a review for another day. So anyway, this takes place um, in the early 1900s. I think it's 1906 is when it takes place. It's uh, act it holds a historical marker for U.S. history uh, because of where it takes place. It mostly takes place in San Francisco. We start out in Chicago with a girl named uh, Sarah Jerome, 
she's the daughter of the housekeeper of the temple house and the mistress of the house has died her husband died years earlier Mrs. Temple has finally died, and the only one left is the son, Richie Temple, who has gone off to San Francisco, and he uh, actually works there in San Francisco in insurance. <clears throat> Sarah has been in love with him since childhood. She was, the, you know, the daughter of the housekeeper, so she wasn't a servant herself, but she was the daughter of a servant. And there was this girl that's a rival of hers named Judith Renwick, who was just kind of a friend of the family and stuff. Her family, you know, her family was friends with them. And, um, so, you know, her mother's not sure what to do. Her name, Mary Jerome. And she gets an offer from, uh, Richie to come to San Francisco and work for the Renwick family. And... She's immediately apprehensive about it, kind of terrified about the whole idea of going to San Francisco because she reveals to her daughter that she used to live in San Francisco when she was married to uh, Sarah's father before he, he vanished and they took off to Chicago. Well, Sarah wants to know about her father. She wants to know about the family she comes from. She wants to know pretty much about her past, kind of like Victoria Winters and Dark Shadows. Which, I mean, this predates Dark Shadows, but it has some of those same earmarks um, to it. So, they pack, she gets her mother to agree, and they pack up and they go off to Chicago. Um, in the meantime, this dream comes back to her, to Sarah, that she's had since childhood, and she's never understood this dream. It's this really creepy moment. It has a mirror and a corridor, and there's a candle to it. I'm just kind of setting the scene here. I don't want to give it away. Um, but, uh, so they end up going to Chicago and they stay in the Renwick house and she has plans. She doesn't want to be a servant in the house. She wants to uh, be more of a modern woman and she wants to work in an office, be like a secretary and stuff. And so she makes plans for that. And she ends up staying in this tower. It used to be um, the little girl, um, Judith's, baby sister's playroom and she's still a little girl whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head. What is her name? Allison. Allison Renwick. And and so she and she stays up in this tower and this tower has you know it's really high and stuff and she loves Sarah loves high places. Well of course the little girl Allison doesn't take too kindly to this and so there's a little bit of a row at the start and she has this cat that only seems to really like her, Allison, I mean, um, named Comstock. And Comstock is one of those characters, he's not a main character, but he's recurring. And he's kind of an interesting little figure because he acts almost like a mother to the little girl Allison because she has kind of a strained relationship with her mother as it is. And, I mean, it just works out perfectly that, you know, he's basically, she's looked after by this cat so but um <clears throat> sarah is dismayed to discover that her old love richie is engaged to basically her rival judith judith is very haunted as she's uh come out of a relationship or an engagement that was kind of suspect and so she's rather haunted so she's not the same person that Sarah remembers and but yet she's engaged to Richie and Richie you know she thinks oh Richie's all you know she's all wrong for Richie she needs to be with Richie and there is a little bit of this flare of uh you know he still cares about her and stuff yet he's engaged to this other woman who you know Sarah sees is all wrong for him and you know of course she only sees herself since they had their little childhood um childhood romance and of course he's a little older than her but still but she soon makes friends with the uh pretty much the man in the house and that's nicholas renwick who also works in the insurance company and he's actually somewhat of a partner in many way in many ways he's kind of like a partner to the um insurance company i don't think he is quite at least i don't remember it being so but he's really high up there um well, maybe it is because maybe it's 
maybe the name Renwick is, I can't remember, because it's, it's mentioned really early in the novel, and I've had other things on my mind recently. So I apologize if I get that wrong. <clears throat> but anyway, so she goes on this journey of trying to discover who she is, and there's this girl named Jenny, uh, they call her Jenny Geneva, but her name is Janina, Geneva Verity, and she may hold the key to Sarah's past. So, I'm actually going to leave it that. I'm sure Regina is going to go much more into detail with it than I have. Um, I want to give a little bit of detail, but I don't want to give it all away. If you are interested in this book, and I know Phyllis A. Whitney is a favorite with people, um, which, I mean, she's already become a favorite with my, of me because I've only, I mean, I've read just one book, but I mean, the book was very captivating. The story was interesting. The way her, her writing style is fascinating. I indeed enjoyed this. I'm sure you can find some old copies here and there, but I know they have it on Kindle in at least maybe two different editions. And it is a historical novel. It's gothic, but it's also historical. And it's a bit of a family drama, too. So I highly recommend this book. Um, I've yet to put it on Goodreads yet, my review, but I'm going to go ahead and say... I'm not you're sure if I'm using bats or haunted houses. Excuse me, haunted houses at this moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with haunted houses. I give it five haunted houses because I liked it that much. Um, I feel like the characters were really rounded. I mean, we get to know about a lot of the characters. Mrs. Renwick, the the matriarch of the home. We learn a lot about her. Um, we don't know everything, but we get a good sense of her, especially as the story unravels. And it jumps, it has so many subplots in it that have to deal with certain characters. Um, and there's the character of Nicholas Renwick. I feel like in some ways we don't know everything about him. There's still more we could have learned about him, but we know enough of his character that I think it passes. Sarah goes through quite a transformation herself. As she's, you know, she has all these hopes and dreams and stuff, somewhat unrealistic. And then by the end of it, she's become rather rounded and she's kind of gone through like a growing up process. And she's come into herself as this uh, strong and artistic woman because she does have a, a flair for design. Not as much for sewing and stuff, but she does do a design of, you know, outfits and dresses and stuff. So she has a really good sense of fashion. And then, um, I don't know if I want to talk much about Richie because Richie, I will say this, Richie's a bit of a rake. And so I don't think he fully develops. He's just kind of a character that stays rather static, but I don't think his, he's going to change. So he's just going to be a character that's going to stay. He's either unrealistic and very shallow. And he's just not a good character and not a good guy. But if you read the book, you'll see why. Um, there is tragedy in this book because the historical pin, uh, point that this takes place in is 1906 San Francisco. And if you know anything about the history of San Francisco, uh, you'd know that that year is the year of the earthquake, and I'm not going to talk too much about it, but there is tragedy that happens there, and there's tragedy that happens other places toward the ending, as the mystery of, actually, the mystery of Sarah unravels maybe close to the middle, maybe earlier than the middle, and then there's more mystery, because there's the dream. What does this dream mean? And then there's um, mystery surrounding a couple of characters, one that's not present, but talked about, and another character who we meet fairly early on, and we learn about that character as well. So, I mean, there is mystery, there is intrigue, and I'm pretty sure that the house in on the cover here, I don't think it's supposed to be the Renwick house, I think it's the uh, Verity home on Van Ness, or at Van Ness, I'm not sure how to say that in that case, um, which is, uh, has to do with the character of Geneva Verity and her great aunt Hester Verity, who are key components in this story. Like I said, it's very much a family drama. Um, actually, you know, it would have been interesting if there had been, you know, another novel. I don't know if you could have turned this into a family saga or not. 
but I mean, it kind of has a little bit of workings for one. I could see if this was ever adapted, which I think I read somewhere that one of Phyllis A. Whitney's books was adapted for television um, in like probably the 70s or 80s or something like that. I could see this being adapted as a mini series or a limited series or maybe even something along the lines of a telenovela. So a soap opera that comes to an end after a while and not, you know, like an ongoing one that goes for years, but they could expand upon some of the subplots that way. Because there's even mention of a haunted room in the Verity house, because the setting does shift to the Verity house at some point, and I'm not going to tell you why. Um, but we still follow the character of Sarah and her mother, but there's a, a haunted room, and of course, this all leads to the secrets, you know, basically very much it's, it's, that's a house of secrets. The Renwick house, big mansion, not a house of secrets, really. The very mansions were, you know, where the juice is, so to say. But, um, I'm sure Regina's going to go into much more detail about it. Um, I feel like my book discussion's a little here, here and there, but it's just... I have so many thoughts on this book. If you want to continue talking about it, please uh, comment down below and we'll talk more about this book. But I do highly recommend it if you have not read it. I've even seen on Goodreads where there was, uh, I think it's someone I follow on Goodreads actually, said that they really wanted to read this in one setting because they said it was that good. And I'd agree. If I could sit and actually read a novel this long um, in one setting, I would, but I don't have the time to do that. And my copy has rather small print. And also the chapters overlap on pages, like right here. This is for chapter nine. The page where one chapter ends, the next one begins. It does that. And so my copy, I couldn't, I found it on Goodreads, but I switched the copy on there that I was reading because it didn't get page numbers, and I like to have it on the page numbers on Goodreads. So mine was 287 pages, and the one on there was the closest I could find. It was just a little more than that. It was like just over 300, so I, had to, I just went with that. Um, but that's probably more like what the book's supposed to be, and it's, it's almost like this is like a very condensed, not condensed content-wise, but condensed you know, size wise. But anyway, that's my review for um, Phyllis A. Whitney's book, The Trembling Hills, which you can find online uh, on e in ebook form. Sorry, I got distracted there for a second. On uh, Kindle, you might be able to find it other places, and I'm sure you can find some paperbacks and hardbacks about here and there. Do check this book out if you like suspense, historical. Uh, historical romance and also gothic and family drama because this is very much it fits into all those and it is worth the read so and there is a little bit of spookiness it's not horror but since it has gothic it it is gothic it does have those elements in it, so it has a little bit of spookiness which is great for the season if you're not one for horror novels you would probably enjoy this one um if you like more romance and mystery but you still have that spookiness. So I will see you next time, uh, probably this Wednesday, and uh, with a, another video. It will not be a review, but it will be um, spooky season related, and it will be book related, so I will see you then. So um, do check out uh, Regina's review. If her review does not go up by the time that I put this video up, because technically today... Today is Thursday, and I'm. this is going up Saturday. I will put the link for her review when it comes out down below. So even if this comes out before hers, I will still put the link in uh, the description down below. And so, so do check out her channel. Do check out her review. And I will see you next time. And that's what I got. So bye-bye.